Welcome back. We are now on level two of lesson one. Um, calculating and comparing data using simple functions. Uh, we're going to start on page 43 of your text. This is the start file you'll need. You should have downloaded it from the Moodle site uh, under level two of chapter one. And you'll notice that this first sheet we have here is um, the exact same worksheet as we ended with last time. So this is everything that we did last time. All right. And on page 43, you'll notice that they are considering two more options, a textured leather option and a high top design. So they're looking at developing two different shoes in this same line. And the cost of textured leather is estimated to be twice as much, and the high top design requires 25% more, as well as twice the lace length, etc. Um, so Paul went ahead and inserted a new sheet and posted that information in right here. Um, this is what we have so far. And down at the bottom of page 43, we're asked to rename these sheets. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, as a note, to insert a new sheet, if you ever need to do that, this one's already been inserted for us, but if you need to insert a new one, you can always hit this plus button down on the bottom here. We'll insert a new sheet. Um, but right now we're going to rename these. This was the original calculations we did for the original shoe option. So we're going to go ahead and rename this sheet original. And there are a couple ways to do that. I can either right click and say rename, or uh, the way I prefer to do it is if you just double click on that sheet tab, it will allow you to rename it, then hit enter and then you're done. So we're going to call this original. Okay. And I'm going to call sheet two um, options, because these are the new options we are considering. All right. All right, so now your worksheet here should look um, exactly like the figure on page 44 of your textbook. And we're going to jump right in to learning some different functions. Now, what we want to do is calculate some totals. He has a totals row here for us, but he has no calculations in here yet. And so what we want to do is put a formula in here that will calculate these totals. Now I could do like we did before and do each one plus etc and do that with all of these. But the problem with that is, as we saw on our last worksheet, um, when we insert new information, it, our total does not update. So Excel provides some functions which are built-in formulas to Excel. And one of them is the sum function. And if you are familiar with the arithmetic uh, term sum, you will know that that means that it's going to add things up for us. So the way you get to a formula, there are a couple different ways you can get to it. You have a formulas tab, and you can find all of your different functions uh, under these drop downs here. Um, or if you know what function you're looking for, you can use this insert function box. And if you know what uh, heading it's under, you can go and find it that way. But uh, my preferable way to do it is if you do know the name of your function, you can just hit an equal sign and start typing it. Excel will pop up a list of suggested functions for you. And when the one that you need pops up, you can either double click it or um, use your arrow buttons to select the one you want, and then hit the tab key. We'll select the one that is highlighted. And we'll automatically insert that function. Now you just have to tell Excel what you are wishing to add. Oh, so we have the sum function here. And you'll see you can that you have different arguments here. For every function, you um, there will be different arguments, and the order in which these arguments are listed is called the syntax of that function. And that's very important because the algorithm behind this function 
that causes it to work and to calculate the correct thing um, only works if you put things in, in the right order. Um, with the sum function, it's a very simple function. Um, the only argument it has are numbers. So I can either put in this and do a comma and go to the next one. Um, but that's not the most efficient way to do it. The most efficient way to do it and the way I would like you to do it for the rest of this class is if possible, where there is a range, go ahead and select the entire range. You'll see it puts in the first cell, then a colon, and then the last cell, and that is telling it to select all of the cells in between. Now to close a function off, um, you put in a, you close off the parentheses, and that tells Excel that you're done with that function, and then you can just hit enter, and it will add all of those up, and you'll see when you click on it, that formula is up here in the formula bar. Now, um, Excel has a pretty handy tool when you click on a box that has a function. It has a little square in the corner here, and that is called a fill handle. And if you click on that handle and drag it, it will fill in the function um, to the next place, and it will um, move the input values as well. So you'll see that this function was using these input values, and so when we go to this one that we filled from that function, it moved the input values over one column as well. Okay, so I did that here as well. Good. Alright, the other thing um, we want to notice is that functions uh, can be used as part of a larger formula. And so if we wanted, suppose we wanted to calculate um, the cost, the materials cost here for a pair of shoes, so two shoes, instead of just for one, I could put a two in here and multiply this entire function by two. All right, so I have an overall formula with a function included inside of it here. And that would be a possibility. I do not want to do that, however, so I'm going to erase that. Okay, so just be aware that that is possible. Okay. Um, I do want to make you familiar also with the auto sum feature. Um, if I did not have my function here, the other thing I can do is Excel has a auto sum, which is a fast feature to calculate simple calculations such as the sum. Um, and that's right here. And if you use this drop-down arrow, it'll show you that there are uh, five different functions here that you can use the auto sum feature with. And you can select more, um, but these are the main ones you will ever use with auto sum. And you notice that this one has the epsilon beside it. Um, if you, oopsies, if you um, just click this button with AutoSum without clicking the arrow, it will assume you're using the sum function, which is why it's called the AutoSum, and it will suggest a range for you, and if that's correct, you can just hit enter. If it's not correct, you could edit that range. All right? Um, the other place you can find the AutoSum feature is under the Formulas button. It is right here as well. Okay. So we have our sum functions inserted into here. And um, as I pointed out earlier, just be aware that the, re the functions under AutoSum here, these five simple functions, only contain one type of argument, which is, again, the number. Um, and so any numbers you insert into those, it will evaluate them. Um, but it's not going to do anything different with any of them. All right. So we're going to actually learn how to calculate some of those other functions as well. Um, we'd like to calculate the average cost here of each of these components for each of these different options here. So I'm going to put in an average function right here. And again, I'm going to just begin typing it in um, until Excel pulls it up right here. I hit tab to select it. It's inserted. And 
we'll select our three different numbers. Again, that's a type of argument. And go ahead and close those parentheses and hit enter. Okay, so it, Excel has automatically averaged these three numbers for us. 4361 is the average cost of the leather for these three design options. Okay, now you can either use your fill handle to um, do those, otherwise you can um, do some different options. So we see if I use the auto sum average there, it uh, suggests the wrong thing for me on that one. So I'm going to select those. Okay, the other way I could do it is to go find it in here. And okay on that, and it's going to ask me what is the range that you want to average. And I'm going to select this range right here. I'm going to hit OK. Um, another way I can do this again is going to my formulas. Um, I believe that's a math and trig function. So, hmm, that isn't. Oh, that's because it's an auto sum function, so it's under here. So there's my average function. Again, I need to select the correct range. Okay. Um, or I can use my fill handle to fill that as well. Um, okay. Now down here, um, I can do, uh, I think what I want to do is a totals. So we'll again take this and do it over there. Alright, so the total of my average cost is 57.47. Okay. Alright, so that's the average function. And now we're going to do a minimum and a maximum function. So, right here, excuse me, um, the minimum function calculates the smallest value in a range, and the maximum function does just that. It calculates the max or the largest number in a range. So we're going to do those functions. Equals min, there it is. Tab selects it. And we're going to select this entire range. We want to know what the minimum value for any of these, the inputs of these uh, three design options is. Do that, go ahead and enter. And then I'm going to do the same thing with a max function. Okay. So we can see that $1.48 is the lowest price we have for any of our design option inputs, and $48.86 is the highest. Okay. Um, we do want to make sure that we are putting in our text labels as we're going here. Up here I'm going to type in the average, and down here I'm going to call this min cost of a component, and we call this maximum cost of a Okay, and there we go. Now we have text labels identifying what those things we just put in are. Okay. Now at this point, your worksheet should look like the figure on page 47. All right. Now, with those two different, the textured lever, leather and the high top options, um, our design team found out that those two options are going to require some additional materials. So right above soul here, I'm going to insert three uh, rows, just like we did before. Okay, there's a couple different ways to do that. You can do it that way. You can go up here and do that way as well. Okay, so I have three new rows here. I can insert some new components. Um, one is a toe. Uh, support brace, and we also have a toe support pad 
to make that brace be comfortable to wear, as well as a, let's see, a back support cushion. And I suppose cushion. cushion. All right. Now, the toe support brace and the toe support brand pad um, is just for the textured leather shoe. So we're only going to have something entered for these two on those ones, but the back support cushion is needed for both the textured leather and the high top options. Alright, so we've got to input our prices here and those are found on page 48. The brace costs $127. And just type that in. And the back support cushion costs three twenty nine. Oopsies. Or the toe support pad. I mean. And the back support cushion um, is going to cost five dollars for the textured leather and six fifty for the high top. Okay. So we have our prices entered in, and I'm just going to leave these blank here, and um, we'll talk about why in just a moment. Um, now, when I entered in those values, you'll notice that the sum function here updated to include them. That's uh, the, one of the beauties of using a function and doing it with a range, is because it will automatically update to include new data um, within the range that was already there. So since I inserted those rows in the middle here between them, it updated to include those. All right. So all my functions have updated to include those costs. All right. Your worksheet at this point should resemble the figure on page 49. So now we need to calculate the averages for each of these new components. And we've got to decide what to do here because we've got some blank cells. So do we want to include an average for all of these? Because if we do, having zeros here would significantly lower the average um, or do we just want to include these values here? And it's helpful to consider how this information will be used when thinking about that. And because this information is to give the purchasing group uh, um, a, great, a better understanding of the magnitude of costs, um, we are just going to average the values where material is being used. So only these ones. Now, there are two average functions. There's an average and an average A. And the average function does not include blank cells when it does its calculations. So that's actually the one I'm going to keep using. It's the same one we used before. All right, so I'm going to use that one versus this average A. And this average function, and I'm just going to select all three of these cells, even though these two are blank. And this function does not include blank cells in its calculation, so it's just going to ignore those. But later, if we ever did add a cost to here, now instead of having to redo this function, it will automatically include these cells. Okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that formula down. All right. Um, So now what we want to do is um, count the number of components that are being used in each option. And the production group needs this information when they plan their storage space that's required on site, and when they plan the hours of material handling they're going to need during production. So we want to count how many of each of the options is being used. So I'm going to enter that right here. So I'm just going to do equals, and there's a function in Excel that says is called count, and it counts the number of numerical values. So I'm just going to do 
the range of our inputs here. And the reason I'm leaving out this number right here, this 50.15, is because that is not one of our materials. It is a total figure for me. Okay, so I don't want to count that number. I only want to count the number in this range right here. Alright, so go ahead and hit enter. And you'll notice it says 5 because it's ignoring these blank cells. It does not count blanks, so we can check that. 1, 2, 3, 4. There were 5 um, components in the original option, so that's correct. Alright, and so I'm going to take my fill handle here and I'm going to use it and drag it over. Alright, so that looks good. And I want to um, also put in a count right here. I want to count the total number of materials options that I have. So I'm going to do that. Now, if I use my count function, I can do that, and when I hit enter, I'll end up with a zero. And that's because this count function does not count text labels. It only counts values, only counts numbers. So, um, what I want to do is I want to use a count a function. And count a does count text values. So I'm going to use the count a, and then select, and then enter. Alright, so now it's counting the total number of component options that I have is 8. Alright, over here, um, this is my average column, so I don't actually need to count this column. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter my t label in that um, section right there, so that I am counting and there's a label to identify what these numbers are. Okay. And at this point, uh, I want to do some formatting to just kind of make this uh, worksheet easier to read. Um, so certain things pop just a little better. So I've la entered this label here. Um, I'm actually going to center that, make it look nice there. I'm going to place an outside border around cell A12 and E12. And uh, if you remember, I get that here. Hit that drop down, put an outside border. Um, and then around cell A13 to B14. I'm going to put all borders in there, and then an outside border around um, A2 through E14. So I'm going to drop that down and hit outside border again, okay? And then I'm going to oopsies, select these ones. Oopsies, I'm having trouble with my mouse here. And I'm going to center and bold and italicize those values right there. And I'm going to add a background to just kind of make them pop just a little bit. Oops, I went a little darker than that. Let's go 25%. There we are. Okay. So now I've just done a little bit of formatting to kind of separate some different things and make it look a little nicer and easier to read. Um, so again, in this level, uh, we did the inserting rows again, the average function, the count function, the sum function, the minimum, and the maximum. So go ahead and complete the steps to success level 2. That's on page 52 of your text. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Or you can post your questions in the student discussion. Um, forum on the Moodle course page as well.